Jesse, and I'm a content creator here. Oh, and I'm a content creator here at Plaid, and I'm so excited to be moderating this special edition Donna Dewberry class today. So I'm sure you all know who Donna is, but if you don't, she is the creator of our folk art one stroke technique. So if this is your first time uh, learning with Donna, you hit the jackpot because you're going to have so much fun today. And you're going to learn so much. And if you're returning, welcome back. We're so happy to see you guys. Um, so if you have any questions for Donna, please go ahead and post them in the chat as she's teaching. And if I don't know the answer, I'll read it aloud. If it's about supplies or something like that, I'll try to answer it myself so Donna can continue. Um, but we're just so excited. I see everybody's letting us know where they're from, Donna. We've got people from California, lots of California, Missouri, um, Sydney, Nova Scotia, Wisconsin. So we've got a big crowd today, Donna, um, and I will go ahead and let you get started. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. I can't believe that this is my second Michael's class this week. And I'm so thrilled to have a store right by me. I could run down there and pick up stuff today and come back and be ready for you guys. But um, if you haven't tried One Stroke before, it is a great way for that beginner novice that wants to paint quick and easy and thought they could never do that. Now, I am doing a really fun, simple little project that there's little steps that makes it really easy for you to figure out how to do um, my way. And that's gonna make it fun for you. So we have some supplies that I wanted to go over with you to get started. And be sure, please tell, you know, write and ask Jesse questions. I would love to hear, you know, what you wanna hear, what you wanna see. And, um, and I'm ready to get started. So thank you so much for joining me and um, joining Plaid here on Michaels, it's awesome. And so I'm gonna go to my overhead camera and we are going to pull over and let you see the supplies. I've got this arm that wants to spring up on me here, <laughs> okay? And maybe it'll stay there and I'll move over. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the supplies we need. Now, I my go-to paint is multi-surface, folk art multi-surface paint. And as you see, these labels have kind of changed along the way. But our newest label is this really beautiful, nice label. And I didn't have every paint in that label. So I just want you to see what you'd probably be seeing in the stores. So multi-surface is just what it says it is. It's a more satin finish. It's got a sealer in it. So metal, wood, ceramic, glass, look at all these surfaces, plus more. So it's exactly what it says. And after you do a background, we're going to uh, leave the canvas the color it is, but after you do a background, what's wonderful is it seals, so that if you paint something you don't like it, you take a wet paper towel and wipe it right off. So, and when I do that, my students freak out thinking they're, I'm ruining their piece and they go, oh, that's wonderful. So just like painting on glass is easy to do. And by the way, next month here, I'm going to be painting on glass. So this is a 10 by 10 canvas. These are supplies that are uh, right there at Michael's and they're listed right for you. I also used another set of brushes on Monday. So I, if anybody was there, so I went and picked up the seven um, pack that they talked about, the Craft Smart brushes. And uh, because I'm on Michael's community, we're using Michael's brushes. And so they're Craft Smart brushes, and they're not all the same sizes of the brushes I normally use, but we're going to use these and have a great time today, okay? And then the other thing that is not listed, if you have floating medium, it's wonderful to use. And if not, be sure to get it in the future because I use this in most of all my classes. So this is a folk art floating medium. So it's the clear medium that's inside our paint that with no pigment in it. So instead of dipping in the water, we would dip into this. And so, cause sometimes uh, people when they're using water, they will make a muddy mess really quick and the floating medium helps that. So just letting you know that for the future, we are going to draw our design together. I don't use a lot of patterns unless we really need to. And so let's look at this again really close. The important thing that we need here is we're gonna draw just this jar. And I have a little trick on how I help you draw it out. So I think that that will be really easy for you. And so that would have been the only pattern, but we're gonna go ahead and go for it. And I'm gonna use aqua and see the water line in here. 
So it's got, we want a base and see how you see the circle inside. So that's the bottom of the jar. And that kind of is a nice, you know, you don't have to have that. You don't have to have the water line. You can tell as a jar, but um, that makes it look more artistic. So just little fun things and the shadow on the side, all those are very simple. You can see we get a watercolor effect in the background. And I just did soft colors and sweet little hearts. Okay, so I'm going to put this to the side. I've got to get both of these in here so you can. Hey Donna, kind of we have a quick question. Okay. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about the floating medium and what is the difference between floating medium and blending medium? Oh, yes. Okay, so now floating medium, because I do one stroke, we do wet on wet. And so when you're doing wet on wet, you don't want extended time. And blending gel extends the drying time. Floating medium dries just as fast as our acrylic paint does. So our multi-surface does. So multi-surface or just straight acrylic and full, full grown acrylic. So floating medium is going to thin it out for me. And it has a gel, so it doesn't uh, spread out and bleed sometimes like water might. So it just makes it easier for you to control. And so we're double loading paint the whole time with one stroke painting. So when you've got that brush loaded, if um, it just feels dry on the canvas, then you dip into medium, work it in, and you'll watch me do that, okay? So that I help you. So I hope that answers you. Blending gel is more like what Priscilla or Andy or some of those others use because, and, and tool painting, because they want it to extend so they can keep moving it, okay? So if that Thank helps you. you. Okay, now, first thing I wanna do is let's get some of this paint out. I am gonna put a little bit a floating medium out so that I can, and I'm doing this on a foam plate and I'm going to pick up aqua and that I wanted something different than just blue because we're using so much blue um, in the painting. So I'm going to put aqua, some look at me blue, and then let's get some greens and then we'll come back with some pink and yellow. All right, so let's pick up um, the lime green. And all these are in that promo kit, 8.30, which are the uh, multi-surface collections for our Let's Paint classes for the Michaels classes, all right? So now let me show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna tap this to spread it out. So then we can get to the edges and still have pure paint in there and not be dipping a lot into that, okay? So um, here's the canvas. This is a square canvas. If you don't have a square canvas and you know you have a nine by 12 or whatever, just have it vertical so you have height, okay? So then what I'm gonna do here is let's, let's put this to the side just a little bit. You see the floating medium? But I'm gonna use water too, so you'll feel comfortable if you don't have floating medium. All right, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna draw. So this is, I want you to see down here, it's not quite two fingers. See this? I hope I'm on the screen. Can you see that, Jesse? Yep, we can see perfect. Okay, so I want to have this line here. And then I want you to see here, I'm going to spread four fingers, or you can go real tight five fingers. If you have chubby fingers, <laughs> you <laughs> might only do four, okay, or guy fingers. Okay, so then real tight, see I'm real tight. And I put that second line. There we go. There we go. All right. So now I'm just four fingers wide. So when I say four fingers wide, I'm just going to make a little mark here and a little mark here. All right. So what has to happen first? And I'm going to be doing less little drawing with you, drawings with you as we do classes. Okay. So just um, get comfortable with this because it's not difficult, but it sometimes people are afraid. And just have a good, I have a white eraser I have here, which, oh, there's, if you get these little, little mechanical uh, pencils that we get for the kids, those are my favorite because it always has the white eraser right there with me. All right, so I'm going to do just a skinny oval. All right, I'm doing it darker for you to see, but you don't need to make it that dark. I'm just doing it darker so it shows to you, but as we paint this lead, the paintbrush and the paint will just move the lead for you, okay? Now up here, I'm going to decide how I want my jar to look. So I'm gonna come right in here and make it zigzag like the screw edge on here. And then I'm going to make 
another skinny oval and a curve. Okay, so that's the lip of the jar. And then we're gonna come down here and I made that jar lip a little small compared to my other ones. All right, so I might just come on out here a little bit. See that? Make it a little bit bigger if you want. And then come right here. See, there's a little bit of curve, but guess what? We put all kinds of painting there. So if this doesn't look absolutely perfect and there's an edge that we're not happy with, then all we will do is take and paint a leaf on it. Okay. So my jar, is not looking as tall as the other jar. Let's see what that is. Okay, so just an illusion. Here we are. Okay, so there we go, ready to go. And that's all we have to do before we get started. I do, I can come in here though and decide how big I want my flower. So if you're over here, my flower is about four feet, tight, tight fingers, okay? So I want it to come down over this lip a little bit and I want it real tight. So I can do it this right here and then I'm gonna turn my fingers like this. And that gives you, see this circle here? It gives you a circle. And when we start doing our greenery, we'll just won't get around that area there, okay? There we go. All right, I've used up that eraser. <laughs> okay, so now the next step. All right, I think everybody's okay with this. We do wanna keep them both kind of in the view a little bit so y'all can see. I thought it was good, but it we is- can still okay. see. Okay, yeah. cool. cool. No questions so far, Donna. Everybody's just saying how excited they are to be here learning with you today and how much they love your classes. Oh, y'all are making me happy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get some water. All right. And we, um, and doesn't Jesse have a soothing voice? <laughs> and I have this loud, rough voice. Okay, oh gosh, so no. looky, we are picking up some water and I'm working it in. Okay. That's what I want to show you. If you have medium, this is what you do. I wipe that off. I will show you. I just get medium, a little bit of medium. You see it? A little bit. And then I would just side stroke it. Okay. So either way, I'm going to go back to the water because I didn't have that in the supply list. So I'm going to show you that we're going to come at the top. I come down a little bit more. All right, I'm too blurry then. Tell me when it, if it is still going to stay blurry. I don't know if you can see that. I think that's okay for this part. Okay, so we're going to come right across here with your three quarter inch flat brush. All right, you see it's bigger when you're doing backgrounds and stuff. It makes it better. Now, did you see me? I keep going back over here and picking up a little bit more. Now, this is the idea. We want a watercolor look. And then what we're going to do is the top layer of this jar that I put on after we do all the stems will be where we get more of the effect, okay? So what I'm doing right now is just showing where that jar is going to be. And it doesn't have to be, I just want this edge to look good, the edge of the jar, so that we know we don't want a stem coming through the glass jar. Does that make sense? I've, yes, had people paint, I've had people paint a leaf out of the glass jar and I'm like, that wouldn't work because they show water in the jar. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, so see that guys? So we want it transparent. So the floating medium or the water will do that for you. Okay, so I keep coming over here and getting more now right here. See how I take the chisel? This is the chisel, the brush, okay? So I take the chisel and I get this oval here and the oval there by the brush being flat, okay? Now- Donna, we have a quick question from Judith. 
Um, they said, I am using floating medium, but my paint is not coming out transparent. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. Um, I need a piece of paper here. I thought I needed to have some. Okay, mm -hmm. so now here's my medium. That's a good question. So here's the medium. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna pick up. Now, you see how I'm picking up? Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's gonna be solid on the edge. Okay, then what you do is you take the medium, just medium, and you walk it across. Just keep picking the medium up because that's enough paint to take it on down here and then walk it across your piece. So it's just that you picked up too much paint, honey. Okay, thanks, All Donna. Right. Did that show okay? Yeah, that looks perfect. That right, really cool. makes, it, makes a lot of sense. Okay, guys. All right, so don't stress about it. It'll just be a, a more solid jar. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're going to add some white and stuff on it. It'll help you when we get ready to put our stems in there. So now what I want to do is I want to come along here and we're going to have a shadow because we got to let this dry a little bit. All right. So the shadow is going to come heavier right along the bottom. All right. And just let me get just a little bit of water. And it would be really light over here because the light's hitting it on this side. Okay. You see just a cast of light blue? Mm -hmm. Aqua? It's aqua. A light cast of the aqua. See how the water helps it move on there? All right. Now this is dark over here. So I do want to come over here. I'm moving that water in there a little bit. Do you see that? Because then yeah. I'm going to pull it out and we're not stressing about it, but what I want you to do is just imagine the shadow from the jar. It's not moving well for me with the water. All right, there we go. All right, so this jar is just reflecting down there. So you can do it like that, or you can pull, pull some edges like this sometimes I do. Okay. Hey Donna, quick question. <clears throat> Carlene said, um, did you just sell your canvas? Nope, this is straight out of the store. And you know what? It always makes it easier to paint when you do, but when you mm -hmm. paint as much as I <laughs> and Jesse do, <laughs> I'm bad. <laughs> so it would probably be way nicer if you did. But... A lot of those, a lot of the canvases too you buy nowadays are kind of like pre-gessoed in. Like the manufacturer does it too. So they are kind of like a little cheat. <laughs> they are. They all are ready for you like that. But um, if you're a fine artist, they like to do it again. And they, yeah. and so I hate to admit it, but I'm just a fun artist. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's okay. It's all about having fun. <laughs> okay. So, um, so let me show you what we're going to do next. There is a water line, but I'm going to let this dry put our stems in and then put a water line. So the water line might go in a lot later, all right? So now this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna come in here with, um, let's see, these brushes are pretty small in here. So I'm gonna keep doing the large one, which might scare you, but it's gonna be okay. Three quarter inch and I don't clean the brush. I leave that aqua in there. I pick up the lime green, okay? And then I come over here. I'm going to grab some of this Look at Me Blue for the darkness. If you have plastic green, you could use some of that. But the list that went on doesn't have it. And sometimes I just put blue in and it gets it deeper. Okay. So now this is what we're going to do. See this little finger? This little finger helps you steady. And if you have the shakes it off, like I do many times, <laughs> all right, when, when I haven't eaten, or eating mm -hmm. too much sugar. Or right, uh, look, we're gonna start down here into, we're gonna be going on the chisel of the brush and we're gonna be lifting the front slightly and just touching the back. All right, so I'm gonna come right in here. That's the stem that you would see in the middle and I'm just gonna come right up here. That might be, that might be right there for the, this flower. So this green might show through, so let's don't go all the way into the flower. 
And then I'm going to do a thinner one. So remember, there's some real thin ones that have some of this in the back. Look at this. Some of this right back here is going to be a watercolor effect. And so I, I want it real thin. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And see, it's easier and it holds paint longer to use the big brush. And I know some of you just like to do a six or a little um, <laughs> small, small brush. I have to take and push those brushes down on my students. Like, mm -hmm. no, we're using bigger brushes. It always impresses me how you get that super sharp chiseled edge with those big brushes, Donna. Well, it's easy because look what we're doing. We're touching, we're mm -hmm. lifting the front and it keeps the paint on there. And look, it just goes straight for you. If you yeah, use a little perfect. liner or if you use a little brush, you run out of paint, run out of paint. I usually use a 12 flat, but this is okay. We're using this and it's working. But see, you got to just let the back tip do it. Okay, mm -hmm. now what we're doing is we're just making little green that's going to show, look at this, little green little stems that show behind here, all right, and so we're just going for illusions, so see I put a big one um, and some real thin ones and two kind of a little bit medium sized ones, okay, so we have two, and look, I go back here, I'm not using water, but you might need to. See a little tip of water. We don't usually like water because then you will make a mess sometimes. <laughs> but you're going to behave, right? And have fun yes, today. <laughs> definitely. All right. Now, wonder... we, I'm sorry. One more thing. When you put the stem, yeah. stems in, they are never all lined up in a row. Okay. They're loose. Like you stick fresh flowers in here. Go ahead, honey. Uh, I just wanted to remind everybody that this class is being recorded. So if you're just watching now to ask Donna questions and to kind of see how she does it first, you can go back um, in the next 24 or 48 hours and watch this class again on michaels.com. So make sure you are using this time to ask Donna all your questions, comments, you know, um, participate and interact with Donna because you can go ahead. Oh, we just put it in here. Thanks, Janelle. She put the link for where this class will be. You can go back awesome. anytime and rewatch this class and repaint this painting. So I just wanted to remind everybody. That's awesome. Okay, so, so far, um, even if you have a big hunky stem, what's going to happen is we're going to put all kinds of little fun detail on it. So this right here has to totally dry. And when it's dry, we put a layer on top. We put the waterline and some white highlights like a glare. And so we don't touch this until the very end. All right. But that's how you lay out your jar. Now let's go and let's start having some fun with our background. Okay, I'm washing out that brush and I'm going to use, um, I think the next size for this is an eight flat. Okay, so we're gonna pick up the eight flat and I am going, I'm gonna do, I keep doing water. This is when I would use medium, if you're out there with medium, with, with the folk art floating medium. All right, so now I want the really faint background. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to go slip, slap, slip, slap with the whole brush. And I'm gonna come really close so you see this. All right, so flat, flat, flat. You're going front, back, front, back. And I want you to do it quick. I don't want it to be square, square, square. Okay, so that means you have to be loosey goosey, light, lighten up, loosen up, have a good time. Really fun little faint, faint, faint means this one's way back. Okay, and look, I can just kind of dab a little bit, tap it a little bit. All right, so this is the darkest. And then it's not, I mean, it's not going to be the darkest, but that's the darkest I've done so far. That's really faint and that's really faint, which is nice. So look again, see what we're looking for. All I was the just faint. about to ask you to move that back in. Somebody was just asking you to see the final one. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. See all the faints in the background. And so I kind of like to put that there to say, oh, here's my perimeter where, where I'm going with this. Okay. So I even had some that little, I just keep mixing this, keep mixing this so it's really faint, okay? 
and then use that puddle to paint with. Okay, so I don't want to say okay 10 more times. <laughs> so now we're going back and forth, back and forth. Okay, have a little bit there. And I like a little bit hanging down here. And, it, and we want it to trail off to be really skinny at the end. Okay, so it's just hanging out. And make it yours. Have a good time. Say, hey, I get lost. The only thing I tell you not to get too lost on is too many leaves. Well, I, I just get lost and just having, oh, I like this. This looks pretty. Because you can put leaves and everything on top of this. All right. Now, now we're going to take that same blue. But we are going to put some of those darker hi highlights. Okay. So I'm going to come in here and pick up more blue. And I use that little thinness to just um, make it not so heavy. And all right, now I'm going to come back and forth. So I lay it to one side and do a half circle, kind of. And we don't we have a couple get... of really nice comments, Donna, I want to share with you. Okay. Um, David said, what a great way to spend my day off painting with Donna. Oh. <laughs> And Candy said, I sure like the way she measured for the large flowers with her fingers. I'll use that in other paintings. Thank you. I have all of your books and brushes. Oh, thank you, honey. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Brushes do make a difference. And what I noticed, even though I'm having fun with these brushes, what I noticed is that we have more bristles. And so it holds a firmer uh, stroke as we do it. But we're you know what we can make it happen there we go all right so a little bit more of the blue right in here so those are just like stock flowers in the background and we might come back and do a few more later but i want to make sure that i don't put it too much where the yellow is going to be or whatever okay so i when i'm working on designs i want you to know that you can always look at a pattern and copy me or whatever but when we're doing a design, we're looking for triangles because the most asked question to me is, how do you know where to go next? All right, so I, without thinking, but I want you to think when you're going, okay, where'd I go next? There's a triangle. See a darker triangle? There's a darker triangle or there's multiple triangles. All right, and that helps you lay out your design. All right, so just look like when you're trying to figure out where to put a leaf, where is the next leaf? So I did big, big. I didn't do a big, but I did a cluster of green there. So, and see the yellow is in a triangle. And then look at my pink, 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 pink. Okay, so that's how you lay it out. So it looks, it's a comfortable move for you to figure that out, all right? So is that working good for you guys? Yeah, so um, far so good. Okay, so let's come in here. And let's put some, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the big flower now. All right. So let's pull out. I did a little bit. One of my favorite is magenta. So we are using cardinal red from this kit and then adding a little bit of bright pink because I like that brightness. Okay. So look, tap it so that I can work in here and get a little bit of, let's look at this color we're trying to get. See a little bit of this color. Okay, and that was a clean brush. And now I'm gonna add the wicker white. Okay, so this is what's gonna happen. I should have got that first. Let me go ahead and do yellow so we don't have to keep going back and forth. I have and a quick have question too, Donna. Okay, go um, for it. Let me see, I almost lost it. Um, Susan said, I'm a little behind having trouble with brush strokes showing in the aqua for the jar. How do I get rid of the brush strokes? In the jar? Hey, mm -hmm. it's okay. It's okay if they're there because we're going to put another layer on top. Don't Perfect. worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, mine might look smooth there, but it, I've done lots of times where it doesn't. If you look at this one, it's a little choppy. See that? So you should not be stressing over something that's not going to matter. All right. And then if it shows there and you're not happy when it's all done, then I'll show you some tricks. Okay. So look at this flower. All right, so let me try to lay it on top of each other since we got this big area here. I just like it to be a little bit closer for you to see it. So I'm holding the camera down a little more. All right, so let's come right here and side stroke. 
Now this isn't really thin watercolor look. This is a little bit more paint. And then we side load wicker white. See, I'm, I do it to it's like kind of smooth and it gives you that color. All right, now this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start here. Oh, I've got a shadow there. We're gonna start here and we're gonna make a little bit of a wave and come down. Okay, so we can come out that way a little bit more. I go back. All I keep doing now is get white. We don't need this anymore. That's where you make mistakes sometimes. Don't go back here. I'll tell you when we need to. We just go get more white. All right. So then we're going to come right here. So I'm both basically laying it flat and making it smooth. But I can put a little wave. All right. Then go back here. Make a little bit of a wave. Now, now's when, all right, I've done three. I'm gonna go back here and work this in again and get strong white, not wimpy. Strong white, see? All right, and then we're gonna come right here. And that's gonna be a fun little gift to give to somebody, a dear friend. Perfect for Valentine's Day too. That's what I'm saying. And for Valentine's Day, for, uh, we've got a few, uh, quite a few of my friends who have lost their husbands last year. Wouldn't they like to get this from you as a gift to uh, remind them of their sweetheart and that you're their friend? Now look how fun that is. All right. So if you guys look at this, we're laying it flat. We just make it almost a half circle, not a half circle, but a, a third of a circle. And then if that's all you do, that's fine. Or you can come in here and put a little bit of a wiggle, not much. I call it a wave. You see that? And when you come around, see, it makes it look better when you come around doing this, when you slide it down so it separates the petals. Okay. So I had to add these little lines in this, but you might not even want to because it's looking good this way. So I could take that little corner again. Remember how we did the corner to do the stems? You can take this big brush and, or you could use a small liner, but I'm just coming in there to put a few little streaks, just a few little streaks. All right. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to do that and get my next brush ready. Sounds good. Yeah. Now I'm gonna be working with yellow next. So five petals, you can do more or less. I did this thing and I'll just share that with you while you guys are working where this is the head. A sweet little lady told me this when I was doing the five petal flower. She said, oh my gosh, that looks like a gingerbread. So if that's the head, there's an arm on both sides and a leg on both sides. And they're not usually bigger, uh, big like this, but that also helps you just lay out the design. Hey Donna, we do have some questions about um, your brushes. Could you let us know if people were interested in checking those out where they could find them? My brushes? Mm -hmm. uh, the one stroke.com. Um, oh no, uh, we can go to Plaid online. Is that what you're okay. saying? Yeah, yep. Plaid online or one stroke.com. And you can get, it's the, um, we have a value pack that has 10 brushes. All right. And, and these are the Craft Smart and that I'm using here. I just ran into Michael's because that's what's on the shopping list. So I ran to Michael's, it's the seven piece because I was, I got the big pack of white handles last time. And, but if I'm using, if I've had, if we've had you go buy these, I want you to make sure that you're using the right one say, and me saying the right one. Okay, all right. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to, with the eight, I've cleaned it out and I'm picking up um, the daffodil yellow, daffodil yellow. So I did tell you cardinal red. Yeah, I did. And 
when I said daffodil yellow, I'm saying, did I even tell them colors? <laughs> I'm, so <laughs> I'm so excited about doing it with you. Okay, so now look what's going to happen right here in the center. Right now, we're just going to, uh, we don't have my scruffy brush. So this is what I would do. I'd use the handle. And I'm tapping thick yellow, daffodil yellow. Okay. Looks so pretty and bright. That's gonna dry, and then we're gonna add white and lime green to it. Work white and lime green. All right, so I want you to see this stroke because it's gonna be a simple stroke. Let me show you up close. All right, we're gonna take this brush full of daffodil yellow. We're gonna get it on the chisel. We're gonna push down and lift to a point. That's all we're doing. Push down and lift to a point. Now, if you are going backwards, push down and lift out, it's a one stroke leaf, okay? But it, we're coming down because it's a bud, a little bud. And then we'll go back and put stems on this. So this is what we wanna have. We wanna have one, and then we're gonna have, they're growing off of the stem maybe. That's covering it really well. Or we're gonna do one, two, three, where it could be a cluster. And we're gonna come with little fine little green stems later, okay? Donna, quick question from Lisa. <clears throat> um, when you start painting, do you use a wet brush or a dry brush? All right, you take your brush, you dip it in water, especially I was getting the sizing out of these. You wet it, you dampen the brush, you lay it on the paper towel, like right here, lay it and let all the run, water run out of it. You don't take a paper towel and wrench it, but you lay it down and let the water run out and then you're ready to paint. And when you're double loading and putting two colors, um, you do not need any medium or any water when you have a, a 12 or smaller because you have enough paint in here that you don't have to do that. You're not gonna have a dry um, stroke if you've put enough paint on the brush. All right, so what most people say about my technique is with one stroke is that um, it, you're using way more paint than I'm using is what they <laughs> always say. They're like, oh, I don't have enough paint because it should, listen to this, it should feel like butter when you're stroking. All right, so if it's not feeling like that, you need more paint. So tell yourself, Donna says more paint, more paint, All right? <laughs> That's a great right. tip. Okay, so like when, when that green shows through, then I would go ahead and put the green right over the petal because that happens sometimes when I paint fruit and there's stems in the background. I paint the whole fruit and then I take a stem right over it. So I'm just throwing out all kinds of ideas out there. So I'm hoping that I'm giving you some input that will help you with your strokes. All right, so now I've got the yellow brush, the daffodil yellow. I'm gonna pick up this blue, look at me blue, lime green, go back and forth. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come right in here. I was too close last time and they said I got blurry. So I'm gonna come right in here, touch that little big chisel. And you guys are going, how do you make that thin? <laughs> like Jesse said. But watch where I'm touching. I'm touching only the corner, okay? And I went and picked up more paint. Oops. And tell me, Jesse, if I get too blurry. Please. Nope, you're good. Okay, so look. See, I didn't have every stem you need when we did the greenery. But look what happened. See how you get a little um, attached there? It's, it's like if you touch and lift. It's thicker, which is nice because it looks like it's grown off of that stem. Hmm. I'm having fun with you guys. Thanks for being on. Yeah, everybody's saying how relaxing it is and how they're learning lots of new strokes and tips. So everybody's having a lot of fun, Donna. Oh, thank you. That's what keeps me going, guys. <laughs> and that's silly. <laughs> I just like when it's all quiet out there, that's the only thing hard about not being in person classes is when you don't hear anybody and you're going, that's why you yeah. need Jesse. That's why you need yeah. Jesse. Yeah, I have the fun part. I get to read all the nice comments as, as you're painting. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if something is a problem that you can, isn't negative to ask, all right? Now look, picking up this, look at me blue a little bit again, it blends in the color, which is in the background. 
and it just makes it nice. And then we have the aqua down here we're going to work on. So I'm going to get going and do a couple of these leaves because if I go a little bit faster now, just remember that you guys can watch it over and over. All right. So here's the leaf. We're going to go. I put um, a Y. You see the Y? And then I pull a stem. So you know we're going to turn a half circle start at that part of the y push down really hard with pressure and turn it around till you get to the tip all right all the way down to there now i'm going to go back into my paint remember i got some blue and some green and then i pull the stem right in there okay so you can put a little bit of wiggle but i just made it real simple so that it wouldn't be difficult for you guys to start with so i'm going to pick up the blue you see this blue Look at me blue, pick up some green. Now I've even put pink in these leaves, so you guys have fun. Okay, now that gave you that gave you shading, but this is the most important thing. Now I'm gonna come right here again. Here's my Y, I'm hoping y'all can see that. Where am I at, right here. Here's a Y with a stem. That stem is where the tip of the leaf goes to. Now watch this, I'm gonna go one, two, three, lay it down. Take a half, uh, turn halfway around, and then stand up to that point. And you see this whole brush is down? It's down really hard. Down, 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 and then stand up. So it looks like a heart. You see that? All right, so you just pull a stem right into it. That's so like pretty, we're... Donna. That gradient you get is like your signature one stroke look. And it is just so beautiful. Every time I watch you do it, it's so relaxing. Thank you. You know what we call that? We blend, that? shade, and highlight in one stroke. I that's love why, it. That's why we call it one stroke painting. Thank you, Jesse. Okay, mm -hmm. so now here we go. There's a couple of things you can do. We're gonna just come in here. Oh, I gotta do the pink yet. But remember what I said, maybe go right over the blossom, then it looks kind of natural. See that? Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna put some of those leaves I told you about. Now look on here. I'm gonna just touch it at an angle. I'm not flat and trying to turn. We're not doing that. We're gonna to touch it. Let me do it blue so it shows better. We're not gonna be flat here and turn. We're gonna start at an angle, push down pressure and stand up and get this little point, okay? For the leaves. All right, so now what's gonna happen here? I need some little ones down here, here. Now what happens if it isn't bright enough, then I can come over and just get a little bit of white. Okay, a little bit of white. Oh, I can't keep going up there because I have the pink flowers. All right, so we can add a few of these here and there. See, that's a lot of yellow, but see how this is, look, see how that's dark there and you don't see the, the difference in the leaves. Just push down and look how that pops by putting that little bit of white on that one edge. All right, and I'm gonna pull the little stem in there again. All right, so now we're just gonna add some pink. Now you see my triangle? Yep. Okay, so um i want to make sure we have time to get this all done so i'm going to pick up this one's more of just the uh the bright pink it's kind of like a neon pink then we're going to pick up some white work this in so it's going to make it a little bit lighter now this is what i want to tell you about this bright pink this bright pink is like a gel inside kind of it's not like opaque and so it will get kind of see-through pretty darn fast so by putting a little bit of white it gives us uh, even a lighter pretty finish. So I'm going to hit the back, not hit. I'm going to push the back quarter down and lift. And they're going to be like little buds. Push and it'll spread out the back corner. Okay. And that had a, a little bit of the red on it, which is fine. Push. <laughs> After you finish these, could you show us really quick, maybe on a piece of paper, that the way you did the heart shaped leaves again? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Let, now, let me show you what I want to do. I want to take white on these little guys and just touch the tip so it looks like it's a little bud. Oh, cute. 
And then now what you're going to do, just remember, you're going to come in here and uh, you get a dip dot. Look, it's got to be fresh paint, not dry paint. And it's one dot. I'm making a mess of that there, <laughs> there, there. And then see if I forget, you're going to come up with a little green stem to pull those together like we did before. All right. So one last thing I'm going to do here so it can be drying while I show you the leaf is I am going, this is the same as I did the leaf. Oops, excuse me. See the little hearts? I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to make a half circle and come down just like my leaf. A half circle and come down. Now I am not going to put my second one on there right now because we gotta do the, the background. But I just wanna show you that. All right, so let's do a leaf here. All right. So this is what this is all about, is teaching you some simple little lessons that will help you. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me make sure I'm not in the shadows. So there's your why. All right, so I'm gonna back up away on the brush so you can see. So I'm one, two, three, kind of blend that a little bit. Push and turn like a half circle and then stand up to a point. Okay, so over here, one, two, three, oh, I got pink in the brush. Do a half circle and then stand up to the point. So when you stand up, you go on the chisel to get a, that point. And it's easy to go back and forth and clean it. And then- Can you remind us what size that brush is? Is it the number eight still? Is the eight, yes. Okay, number eight flat. Yes. All right. So what I like to do is just come in and maybe do some pink leaves here and there. So all of these I did wrong. So look, I'm pushing pressure and standing to the point. Now the point's the important part of a leaf. All right. So when I'm doing this, touch, turn, turn, turn. So I've got this half turn and then stand up and go to a point. Turn and stand up and go to the point. So when you stand up, you got to hold the handle straight up. You can't lay your brush down and get a point. You got to, here's my brush that's straight up and down and stand up. So now I want you to think about this. There's three P's to one stroke painting. Enough paint on your brush the position of the handle, enough paint on the brush, the position of the handle and the pressure. So this is many people just do this and they pull it like this and they don't have any pressure. So you gotta put pressure and then lift, no pressure, pressure and then lift, okay? But see, I'm running out of paint because I don't have enough paint, okay? So let's go back really quick. We just got a few minutes left here and I am going to use floating medium, but you can use the water. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of white on here, but you've got to put the water or the medium and work that in because I want to see through still. All right, so this is what we do. We just put a nice coat on here. And if it's too heavy, you just wipe it off really quick and redo it because the paint will come right off of this. Or if it's not heavy enough, you have to put a couple of coats. All right, so if you're using the medium, you might need a little bit more coat on there. Okay, so I'm reinforcing that a little bit. And then I'm leaving, see this has already got that line back there. And then I'm going to take a smaller brush. And I guess we're going to use that again. <laughs> With my technique, I don't use a lot of little brushes. <laughs> so uh, I keep going back to the largest one I can use. Okay. <laughs> now, look, we want a line of water. So the line wouldn't be totally straight. It should be a little bit of an angle. Okay, and if you're really fancy, you can make the back line arch and then do the front line, but we don't need to. We just need to get that in there, right? And then the last thing I want to show you that I like to do is I can go into the white paint, the last thing on the jar. 
All right, and I'm going to do a couple things. I can come right along here and just put a little bit of a glare across, or I can also put a white line that curves, okay? All right, I came across the bottom a little bit. And when that dries, you can still see through it, right? Look, you chisel and then you stand up and it just looks like a little glare. And we also put with that same chisel a little bit of a line for the jar, the screw top there. All right, now I'm gonna take, which one would this be called? This is a three round, all right? So what I did was I mixed these two colors, the um, cardinal red and the bright pink. And I came across here, I kind of mixed those together and I'm gonna put a little bit of twisted color in there. And then now watch what's gonna happen. I go up, oops and make a loop. Now, if you did that and you did that, it kind of looks like an eight, right? But I like to make a droopy loop. So I grabbed a little bit of white this time and I'm gonna come right inside of that loop and come back up. Let me show you. So I mix these two colors kind of, and then I streak through white. So look, I'm gonna come right here. See how it already highlights it? Then look, we're gonna put a little knot there. I need more white. So we just put a little C. And then I did kind of put white over this like it's twisted a little bit, all right? And then I want to have this loop come down and then this one come down here, all right? So you can just block that hard in there and you could come around and just Go around the outside edge if you wanted to, or we can stroke it in. We've got right. a couple funny comments, Donna. Um, right. Susan said, even Donna's oops look good. <laughs> <laughs> and Carleen said, I'd be thrilled to just have her oops in my paintings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So see, there's the heart. I'm going to go in here again. I guess I used a little bit of the cardinal red around that outside edge. But look, you're just going to do a half circle, a half circle. And this needs to dry before I'm doing this, but I'm not, don't have the time that I can let it dry. But see, you can take the blow dryer or whatever, and then come back and put these little cute little hearts. But I also like to put a little teeny bit of white. Okay. I side loaded. Remember how I side stroked into the white? And there we go. See, that one looks nicer. Okay, there we go. Now, I am last little thing. I want to take that uh, 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 three round, and I want to take some of this lime green, and I put I just dab some in here along the bottom, and just remember dots are fun. So you can come in if there's some space in there. I have a few spaces that came in there that were left, and I can take my handle with different colors, um, like even this neon pink. And look how pretty just putting little dots in here. And that will just look like it's another little flower. But have fun, make it yours. Change these colors up, do whatever makes you happy. See how that looks like a little spray hanging there? And I, that looks really pretty on the blue. That's uh, like kind of looks like neon pink. It's called gray mm, it pink. It looks really pretty. Okay, and then you sign it. Did I leave anything off? I think we're done. <laughs> okay. Oh, and beautiful. Is it kind of fun, guys? Oh okay. gosh, Donna, everybody's having so much fun. Everybody's saying thank you so much. They love um, watching you paint. We had one sweet comment that said they're so lucky to have you in their life. Um, everybody um, had so 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 much fun painting with you today. Oh, thank you guys. I love hearing from you guys. That keeps me going, I have to tell you. And they said, you don't need
to um, you just paint, they'll be there. And I'm like, no, I know they're there. I want to fill them by hearing what they're saying. It's important to the artist. It is, isn't it, Jesse? There you go. Sorry, I accidentally muted myself. Yes, it is. It's nice to get feedback for sure, to know that you're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. Um, so guys, don't forget that this class has been recorded. So you can go back and, and Donna did a class on Monday night. You can watch that one and paint along with her. But you can go back and rewatch this class too with Donna. Um, and Donna will be back here with Plaid in the Michaels Community Classrooms next month in February. So those February classes of Plaid's will be posted sometime in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you check that out because we are planning on having Donna join us here in the Michaels Community Classroom um, a lot more this year. So make sure to keep up with that if you had fun today. Um, we loved having you. We love having Donna, of course. Donna's our, our very favorite here at Plaid. We love, love, love painting with her. Oh, you're um, so sweet. Thank you. Oh, gosh, no problem. So any, any last comments, Donna? Oh, I just, let me tell you what we wanted to say to you from the Let's Paint studio it is let's paint. <laughs> yes, as always, let's paint for sure. Um, guys, if you don't know too, we have a Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group too. So Donna's a member of that group. I'm in that group. I'm sure a lot of you already are in that group, but people always post their paintings. They post their one stroke paintings and any kind of artwork they like to make. Look how beautiful that is. This um, is what- love to have you there. This is what tells Michaels and Plaid if you're happy is if you post, um, what is it? Hashtag let's paint challenge and you yeah. share and you share what you did with me and Jesse and all of us. Okay. So until next month, let's paint. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>